Hello again, my name is Peter Loblans and I represent Ternary Logic LLC and this presentation deals with binary feedback shift registers uh, illustrated with simulations in MATLAB guides. You can obtain for free the programs for MATLAB by sending me an email at admin at turnerylogic.com. Binary feedback shift registers are among the most widely used and probably the most invisible devices uh, in, in electronic applications. Um, I think it's not an exaggeration to say that at least 10 to 100 millions of devices of these devices are applied every year. They can be implemented by discrete elements, which is usually the case when you want to have very rapid application of these devices, for instance, for sequence generation or error correct coding but they also can be implemented on processors. So the basic structure of a feedback shift register is shown in this device that has five shift register elements. In general you would say they have K, so in this case K is five shift register elements. Um, each shift register element has an input and an output. The output is always available and the input is shifted into the shift register element under the control of a clock signal, which we won't show in these devices because it would obscure the functionality, but you have to assume that there is a clock signal available. The content of a shift register element is moved on the clock pulse to an adjacent, in this case the right shift register element, and though it appears that the content of the shift register is moved from the left to the right, and because of the feedback, the content of the last shift register is fed back into the first shift register element. So it's sort of, the content sort of rotates. Um, the content in this device, as shown, is shifted and not modified. And we'll show that in a quick demonstration in MATLAB. Here's the device, you see five shift register elements, all have the content zero. Here's the clock, number of clock pulses. When we start running the shift register with feedback, you see nothing happens, or it seems that nothing happens. It's just because the content is zero, so zero is shifted to the right, and it appears like uh, nothing is happening. However, if we put it as one in the first shift register element, and we start over again, we see there it goes and it's, it sort of shifts through and rotates back. So that's a very simple, basically the simplest uh, application of a binary feedback shift register. A little bit more complicated though, you don't see many of those either, is by putting an inverter in the feedback loop. Uh, the inverter modifies or converts a zero into a one and a one in a zero. So in this case, it inverts the content of SR5, provides that the input of SR1, and on the clock pulse, that inverted signal is entered into SR1. And so zero on the end is a one at the input, and the, the first one and a, a one at the output of SR5 will become a, a zero at the input of SR1. You have to keep in mind that all switching functions are assumed to be performed before shifting. That is, um, it would be uh, rather useless to first shift and then still wait for the inverter to invert. So the assumption in all these presentations is that all the devices, the feedback devices, will provide their output first before the content is shifted in the shift register. This is called a delay. So uh, let's show the, the, uh, the demonstration of this device in MATLAB. Here you see again the, uh, the diagram, the content is zero, and here you will see that as a result, because this last zero is going to be inverted and becomes a one, this one does not have a all zero a constant all zero content, but it changes all the time because of the inclusion of this inverter. That's a good idea, and actually we can change that uh, inverter into a two input, one output 
switching function, such as the XOR function, which is the most generally applied and commonly applied switching function in a feedback shift register in the art. You actually could use also the equal function, uh, but for some reason, well, there's some technical reasons, people prefer the XOR. So what happens in this one is we take the output of SR3 and SR5. Those are inputted into the uh, XOR function and provide a signal temp. And so if this, this is the case, here is the expression temp is XOR SR3 comma SR5. That's the function that is performed and that output is inputted in SR1. Again, you have to assume that the delay that may occur in this switching device uh, has to take in consideration before the clock pulse is operated to allow the shift register element to assume their new content. And let's show this in a MATLAB presentation. Here we go. Here you see actually what we would call a forbidden state for this type of device because if the content of the shift register is all zero, it remains all zero when we operate the device. You see the clock is adding but nothing happens. If we now change this for instance into a one and we start running the uh, shift register again, you see that we see a constant change of the content of the shift register. This device is actually called a device in a Fibonacci configuration and that is that the, the uh, switching device is in the outside loop or in the loop, the feedback loop outside of the shift register. We also can put some of these functions between shift register elements and that will be called a Galois configuration. We'll show this later. <coughs> Here we see another Fibonacci configuration because we can add additional functions and this actually demonstrates the effects of the delay because in this case it's clear that before we can update the content of the shift register we first have to execute this XOR function which generates temp1 and then the results of this switching function XOR function which generates temp and then we have to update all the shift register elements. So if one device has a delay of delta t, delta t, then the total delay that we have to take into account is two times delta t before we can update. This is shown in the following presentation or demo. And again, um, zero, 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 all zero is a uh, forbidden state because nothing happens. It's a, uh, so if we make this one and then we start running it, you see that we see that this is changing. So that works. It's actually fairly simple, uh, though you can make it as complex as you want. But this is sort of a refresher of a reminder how the shift register with feedback works. So in this one we see the uh, Galois co configuration. In this case, the XOR functions are placed between shift register elements and you can see that these devices are executed in parallel at the same time so you just have to ha use a delay of a single delta t and you see that what actually the feedback is is SR5 content is fed back into this one and is combined with the output of SR3 and in this one it's the output of SR5 which is combined with the output of SR1 um, works equally well actually. Um, it doesn't matter much if you program this on a processor but if you execute this with discrete devices clearly the color the color configuration is faster if you use multiple devices in the feedback. And here is the uh, device. Again 0000, zero, zero, zero is the uh, forbidden state nothing happens even though the clock is updated but if we put a one in here you see that the content is dynamically changing with every clock pulse so that provides the uh, 
basic two configurations, Fibonacci and Galois of feedback shift register in the binary case. Here we see um, the no, uh, another time the Fibonacci configuration. Here I call the functions SC2. In general, those are the XOR function, but but they can be actually any binary function. They can be reversible functions, but they also can be non-reversible functions. They can be the XOR and or the equal functions or all equal functions, etc. Um, usually that is not done in the art. Usually we limit ourselves to XOR functions and that is because of the description of the what is called the linear feedback shift registers, LFSRs. Usually we want to present the performance of an LFSR in a polynomial expression where the coefficients of the polynomial that describe the uh, the shift register as we have shown where the coefficients determine the taps. So you see the taps here are at 1, 3 and 5, at 1, 3 and 5, at 1, 3 and 5. And so you can only do this if you use this plus and you use a coefficient that's 1 or 0 which means it has to be defined over a, uh, a finite field, actually, and I won't go into that. However, in our presentations, linear does not mean linear as linear in function, but means on a line or serialized. So that's it, the binary feedback shift register. Thank you very much, and the next presentation is on non-binary feedback shift registers. Thank you very much.